Hi there, my name is Daniel Truckenbro, and I work at Brooks Publishing, the publisher of the Ages and Stages Questionnaire. In this video, I'll be showing you how to complete an ASQ screening through Family Access. Family Access is the online portal that your program uses that enables you to complete an ASQ screening on your phone, computer, or tablet. There are a few different ways that your child's program may direct you to their Family Access page, including an email, text, or a link on their website. Today, I'll be completing a screening that was sent via email, but the way in which you complete the screening will look the same no matter how you access the portal. So here in my inbox, I can see that I have an email from my child's program asking me to complete an ASQ3 screening. In this email, there's a little bit of information about the questionnaire, as well as a link to the Family Access page. So when I click this link, I'll be taken to the Family Access page. Each program's page will look slightly different, but there will be a few options for you to select from. If your child's program uses both ASQ3 and ASQ SE2, you may have the option to complete both questionnaires here. If your child's program uses just one of these tools, then you'll see just that one tool listed. If you're returning to Family Access to enter the results of a questionnaire that you previously completed offline, you would select this last option here. I'll show you in just a moment how to download the questionnaire for you to complete offline. So today I'll just be completing an ASQ3, so I'll select this option here. And on this page, I will be given a little bit of information about the ASQ3, and I'll be asked to enter my child's date of birth and the weeks born premature. So here I'll enter the date of birth, and I can either type in the date of birth in the year, month, day format, or I can use the calendar function, and I can select the birth date this way. So here I will select my child's date of birth, and I will enter the weeks born premature, and I am completing the screening today, so I will select this option here, and then I will scroll down and I will click Submit. And here on this page, the system will inform me that based on my child's date of birth, I will be completing the 30-month ASQ3 questionnaire. Below that, I also have the option to download and print the questionnaire if I'd like to complete the questionnaire offline. The system does not save your progress, so if you exit out of the questionnaire before you submit it, your progress will not be saved. So if you'd like to take a few days to try the items with your child, or if you're unable to complete the questionnaire in one sitting, you do have the option to download the questionnaire and complete it offline, and then you would return to the system to enter those results. And that's where you would select on the first page that last option where it says you're returning to enter your results from a previously completed questionnaire. But I will be completing this ASQ3 30-month questionnaire today, so I will click Enter Your Results. And on this page, I will be asked to enter some information about my child and myself. So first, I will be asked to enter my child's name and the address. And if your computer has an autofill function, you can use that to auto-populate these fields and that can make this process a little quicker, but I will just enter this information here. And then I will enter my information below that. And if my address is the same as my child's, I can click this button here and it will autofill my information pulling from the information I entered above. And then I will enter my email address, and then I will click Next. And I will be taken to the ASQ3 questionnaire. So here at the top, there are instructions for completing the questionnaire. And then below that, for ASQ3, there are the developmental areas listed here. And then below that, there are the items, and to the right, there are the responses for each item. So for each item, you'll have the option to select Yes, Sometimes, Not Yet, or Response Missing. You would only select response missing if you're unsure of or unable to answer the item. However, if you select response missing for more than two items, then the questionnaire will be invalid. So we do strongly recommend that you try to provide a yes, sometimes, or not yet response for each item to make sure that the questionnaire is valid. So you'll go through and read each item and try it with your child and then select the corresponding response. So we will start selecting our responses. And as we go through the questionnaire, we can see that this item is asking me to select some examples. So can my child carry out at least three of these kinds of directions? So if I select yes, I would then select which directions my child can follow. And then I would move on to the next item. And I will select a response for this item and move on. And then I can see that this one is asking for a written response. So does my child make a sentence that is at least three or four words long if I select yes? I would then type in the sentence that my child can say. And then I would move on to the next item. And I would select a response. 
and a response for this item. And then scrolling down, there's an arrow here, and that will progress me to the next developmental area. So when I click that, and I can see that I have progressed through the communication area, and I am now in the gross motor area. The system will also tell me that the communication area was successfully saved, but it is important to note that it's only saving my progress within this session. So if I click this X and exit out of the window, I will lose my progress, and when I return to Family Access, I'll need to recomplete the questionnaire. So you can see that some of the items are provided with an illustration, and this can help give me an example of what the item is asking if I'm a little unsure about the item. So I will continue through and provide responses for each item. And again, you'll want to take your time to go through and try each of these items with your child so that you can provide an accurate response. But as we go through and provide responses for items, we will then get to the bottom where we can click the arrow to progress to the next area. Um, so I'm going to jump ahead and go to the overall section, but again, you'll want to go through each area and try each item with your child and provide an accurate response for each item. So once I've completed all of the other pages, I will then be taken to the overall page. And this page is asking about any specific concerns that I may have about my child. So you can see here, this first item is asking if I think that my child hears well, and if I select no, then I have an area to explain. So for example, if I select no here, I can enter the concern that I have. And then that'll indicate a concern to my child's provider. And then when they follow up with me about this questionnaire, we can discuss this concern. So as I go through, I will select the appropriate response for each item. And if I do have a concern, I will enter the concern into these text boxes. And then as I get to the bottom of the page, I have the option to submit. So when I click submit, a pop-up will open up saying I will not be able to alter my answers after I submit this questionnaire, and am I, am I sure that I want to submit it? Uh, so if you have a pop-up blocker enabled on your uh, web browser, you may need to disable that in order to get this prompt and finalize the questionnaire. So I am sure that I want to submit this questionnaire, so I will click OK. And here I will be taken to a thank you page. So each program's thank you page will look slightly different, but this page is basically just letting me know that the questionnaire has been submitted and that the program will be in touch with me to discuss the results of the questionnaire soon. Um, some programs also offer the option to print activities to support my child's development in between screenings. So if I click this link here, I can see that I've downloaded a PDF of activities for me to try with my child. So that's how Family Access works. Uh, if you have any questions about Family Access or ASQ screenings, we suggest that you reach out to your child's provider and discuss those questions with them directly, and they should be able to provide you with answers and information about the screening process. Uh, so with that, I just wish you all a happy screening.